In the next few minutes, I'm gonna teach you how to build unbreakable consistency. I lost 45 pounds in four months because I studied the science of consistency. And since then, I've helped over 120 people get in the best shape of their life by teaching them the same thing. But when I asked a thousand people on my email list what they struggle with the most, 88% of them told me it was staying consistent. So if you struggle with it too, you're not alone. Today you can expect to learn the two key things that you need to build unbreakable consistency so that you can win every day, get more done, smash your goals and realize what your true potential actually is. So grab a pen and some paper because you're gonna wanna make some notes. Consistency boils down to two things, having a vehicle and having a driver. But don't worry, you don't need to be an F1 driver. You don't even need to have a car. Let me explain. Your vehicle is your plan. Everyone who has ever achieved anything in life had a plan. And one of the main reasons that most people never master consistency is either because they don't have a plan or they overcomplicate their plan and get overwhelmed. They don't know where to start or they set themselves up to fail by trying to do too many things at once. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about here. Drawn out morning routines, trying to eat specific foods at specific times, thinking you need to work out every day and then getting frustrated when you do all that for a week but don't see any progress and give up. You need a better vehicle, a better plan, a simpler plan because the simpler something is, the easier it is to stick to. So when you're thinking about your vehicle, the first thing you wanna do is start with the what. What are you actually trying to achieve? What's the one big goal? You don't want five goals. You want to tackle one at a time. Balance is for losers. Balance is a mirage that keeps people poor, unhealthy, and miserable because it doesn't exist. When do you want to achieve it by? And is that time frame realistic? And why is it so important that you achieve it in that time? It's important to think about this stuff, to ask yourself these questions, and to figure it out up front so you know where you're actually trying to go. Once you're clear on that, you need to think about how you're going to reach your goal in that time frame. What's going to help you and what's going to hinder you? You want to do more more of the things that are going to help you and you want to remove as many of the things that are going to hinder you as possible. So here's some questions to ask yourself at this stage. Is your environment set up in the best way? Have you cleared all the junk food, all the sweets, all the treats, all the temptations out of your cupboards and your fridge? Have you made your bedroom as comfortable, as cold and as dark as possible to optimize your sleep? Are you hanging out and spending time with the right people who are actually going to support you? Have you removed any food delivery apps from your phone? Have you unfollowed any food pages or negative accounts on social media and equally have you followed some accounts that are going to inspire and motivate you there's loads more but you get the idea these are just the ones that i can think of off the top of my head but what we're doing here is interrupting your behavior patterns because your environment which is who and where you spend your time will always trump your will. Imagine you open your fridge every day and you see chocolate. You'll resist for a bit, but eventually you're gonna have a bad day and you'll cave. Now imagine a fridge where you open it and there's no chocolate to be seen. Even if you're having a bad day, there's no temptation to distract you. So think about all the negative patterns in your life and try to remove as many of them as possible. Once you've done that, we need to set some non-negotiable habits that you're gonna do every single day or at least every week, regardless of how you feel. Because the only difference between winners and losers is that winners do it even when they don't feel like it. If you're running your entire life on how you feel, well, I've got news for you. You're not gonna get very far. Your non-negotiables are completely up to you, but these are the ones that I would recommend if you wanna make the most progress in the shortest amount of time. First up is your calories. Nothing is gonna have a bigger sway on whether you hit your goals or not than the amount of food that you're eating. If your goal is fat loss, you need to be in a calorie deficit where you're eating and drinking less calories than you're burning. And if your goal is to build muscle, you just wanna be in a small surplus, five to 10% above your maintenance. You need to know how many calories you should be eating, you need to track those calories, and you need to stick to that number. Now that might all seem a little bit overwhelming if you're brand new to this, or if you've never seen any of my videos before, but don't worry, I'm gonna break it down for you right now. Every single one of us has what we call a maintenance calorie number. And this is the number of calories that you need to eat every day to maintain your current weight. And if you eat exactly that amount, your weight will stay the same because you're giving your body just enough fuel to support all of its activities from basic functions like breathing and digestion, all the way up to more active stuff like walking or even exercising. And your maintenance number is unique to you. It's calculated using a scientific formula and it's based on your age, your weight, your height, your sex, and how active your lifestyle is. Now, if you eat less than your maintenance number, you're gonna lose weight because your body will use your stored fat as fuel. And this is called creating a calorie deficit. There are 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. So that means if you stick to a daily 500 calorie deficit for a week, 
you're gonna burn a pound of fat. 500 times by seven, seven days in a week equals 3,500. This is what one pound of fat looks like, by the way. As you can see, it's pretty substantial and definitely not to be sniffed at. And here's the thing, your goal might be to lose 10, 20 or even 50 pounds, but you only need to find what works to lose that first one. Because once you know how to lose one, you rinse and repeat the same process. So your next question is probably, how do I calculate my maintenance calorie number, Doug? Well, if you click the first link in the description that's underneath this video, I'll give you personalized nutrition targets for free. All you have to do is tell me some basic information like your age, your weight, your height, and how active your lifestyle is, and I'll do the rest. I'll give you your maintenance calorie number and a fat loss target so you know exactly how much you should be eating. So if you want to pause the video and give that a go right now, it's only going to take you 30 seconds and then we'll crack on. Non-negotiable number two, have protein at every meal. Whatever your goal, protein is good for you. If you're trying to build muscle, you need protein. But even if you're trying to lose weight, protein has plenty of amazing benefits. It's going to stabilize your blood sugar levels. It's going to fill you up and it's gonna speed up your metabolism. You wanna aim for 100 grams minimum per day, but if you use the calculator that I just talked to you about, I'm gonna give you a precise target. And in all honesty, if you just aim to get protein in every meal, you're not gonna to have to worry too much about hitting 100 grams. Non-negotiable number three, drink three liters of water every day. So many people tell me that they struggle to drink water, but it's only because they're not focused on it. I wake up at 6 a.m. and have 500 milliliters of water with an electrolyte powder that tastes like orange juice. I go to the gym at 7 a.m. with a two liter bottle of water just like this one, and drink the whole thing during my workout. Then I have a protein shake mixed with another 500 milliliters of water when I get home. That's three liters of water by 9 a.m. Simple. Here's the thing though. You don't need to drink three liters of water by 9 a.m. If I can do it by 9 a.m., you can do it by 9 p.m. Fair enough, drinking water isn't hard if you focus on it. But listen, it wasn't always easy for me, but I focused on it and it became a habit. And it's such an underrated high leverage habit because of the amazing benefits that it gives you. I'm not hungry, I'm not lethargic, I don't have any brain fog, I'm energized all day. Trust me, this is a game changer. Non-negotiable number four is that you wanna be walking 8,000 steps a day. 8,000 steps a day is about 45 minutes or so of walking. And it's a lot less overwhelming than 10,000, which can seem like a huge number and a big barrier to a lot of people. 8,000 steps a day will help you burn at least 200 calories, if not more. It's easier than having to run, it's far more sustainable, you're not gonna get injured, and you can multitask while you do it. Whether it's phoning your mum or a maid, listening to an audiobook, a podcast, or a playlist, or even taking work calls. Walking also activates your parasympathetic nerve system, which is the part of your nervous system, part of your brain, which is linked to relaxation. You know what it's like when you've been cooped up all day, whether it's at home or in the office, and then you leave that place, you change your environment, and you start to feel better. You realize the stress, the problem, wasn't as bad as you thought it was. Your perspective shifts. And even better, you'll probably solve that problem by going for the walk. That's your parasympathetic nervous system kicking in. And guess what? Less stress equals more relaxation. And more relaxation means you feel better. And when you feel better, you're far less likely to eat bad food and you're more likely to sleep better. And that leads me very nicely into the fifth and final non-negotiable, which is all to do with your sleep. And specifically, setting a bedtime alarm. So when you're setting your bedtime alarm, you wanna work backwards. Let's say you wanna wake up at 7 a.m. That means to get a full eight hours sleep, you need to be asleep by 11 p.m. You wanna set your bedtime alarm for absolute latest 10 p.m. And then crucially, whatever you're doing when that bedtime alarm goes off, you wanna switch off and start winding down, getting ready for bed. Because it's not enough to just be in bed for eight hours. It's gonna take you 20, 30, maybe even 60 minutes to get into that deep sleep. And sleep is a little bit like water. It's such a high leverage activity because there are so many downstream benefits from prioritizing it. Think about it, you get a good night's sleep, you wake up refreshed. <laughs> you're not constantly chasing your tail. And even though you're just as busy, you don't feel as stressed. You're in flow. Everything just seems easier. So remember, the way you do everything tomorrow is gonna to be determined by the decisions that you make tonight. If you stay up late watching serial killer documentaries and scrolling TikTok at the same time, you're not gonna feel great, are you? So set a bedtime alarm, and whatever you're doing when that alarm goes off, you stop, you wind down, and you get into bed. Remember, this is a non-negotiable. And listen, I cannot emphasize this enough. At the beginning, when you're first getting started, you're not gonna to want to do any of this. But consistency is not about doing what you feel like doing. Remember, the only difference between winners and losers is that the winners do it even when they don't feel like it. But if you stick with it, you'll start to see and more importantly, feel better. And then your whole value system will shift for the better. Your brain is gonna be like, oh, I feel better for this. And then it will positively reinforce the behavior and encourage you to keep doing it. It's worth bearing in mind, and I remind my clients of this all the time, the first steps are the biggest and the hardest. But every step you take gets easier 
and smaller. If you can boil it down, your plan, your vehicle to those five things, those five non-negotiables, it's much simpler, isn't it? But before we switch focus and talk about your driver, the last part of your vehicle is accountability. Now, assuming you don't have a coach, you need to hold yourself accountable. And the best way to do that, tell people what you're doing. Because I guarantee you, there will be a subsection of those people who will be waiting for you to fail. So if you tell them what your goals are, you're far more likely to follow through on the actions that you need to take to hit them. But as well as that, I would also give yourself a checklist. Every morning, you wanna write out your non-negotiables, and then every evening, you wanna be able to tick each of them off. That might sound a little bit monotonous, doing it every single day, but it's very purposeful. And if you do this, if you spend just two minutes every single morning actually writing out what your non-negotiables are, you are far more likely to execute on them. And the more days in a row that you execute, the bigger and longer the streak that you build, the better you're going to feel, the closer you're going to get to your goals. So that's the first thing that you need to become consistent. You need the right vehicle. Next, you need a driver. When I was talking to you about your vehicle, your plan, we covered the what and the how. What you actually want and how you're going to go about getting it. Now we need to cover the why. And it's equally important, if not more important. Why do you want what you want. This shouldn't be something that you just glaze over. You really want to think about this. Why do you actually want that thing? And the reason needs to be something deep, something powerful. And I'll be really honest with you here. If you can't think of a deep reason, you just don't want it enough. And that's okay, but I'm just telling you now so that you don't waste your time and ultimately fail. A bad example of this would be that you just want to look good on Instagram on your next holiday, seeking external validation. Because if you're doing it for external validation, for the approval of others, you'll realize something a couple of weeks in. No one cares. Do not do this for other people. Do it for you. So what would a good example of a driver actually be? Well, it could be that you're pre-diabetic. Maybe you've had a health scare. Maybe you've had your heart broken. Maybe you want to get as healthy as possible to try and get pregnant. Maybe your health embarrassed you because you failed a test or came last in a race. Or maybe it's because you're just so damn sick and tired of everybody around you looking and feeling better than you. And listen, if you're driven by guilt, good. If you're driven by fear, good. If you're driven by shame, good. It's how you use those emotions, that stress. Can you galvanize it and use it for good? Your driver needs to be deep-rooted. It needs to be intrinsic. You cannot rely on motivation and willpower. Your driver needs to be something that gets you out of bed on a cold, dark, rainy Tuesday morning when you're six weeks in and everything hurts a bit. Part of your driver is rooted in your identity. And listen up, because this bit's important. If you're not where you want to be, it's because you're not who you mean to be. The very first lesson on my coaching program is all about getting into the superhero mindset. You see, your reality lags behind your identity by six to 12 months. Your reality is how the world sees you, whereas your identity is how you see yourself. You have to change your ways now to get the reality that you want in the future. You need to be thinking, acting, walking and talking like the future version of you would do. So think of your hero, real or fictional, and now ask yourself these questions. What would their habits be? Who would they be hanging around with? Would they skip workouts? What would they eat? And then just do that. Over time, you'll start to become the best version of yourself. But ultimately, you cannot get what you want until you truly become the person who deserves it. And there are no exceptions to this. Even lottery winners who were lucky when they won, after a report being miserable or even broke, just a couple of years later. Did you know that Marilyn Monroe wasn't born Marilyn Monroe? Marilyn Monroe was born Norma Mortison, but she changed her name for her career. Why? To create a new identity. She knew that to reach the pinnacle of fame and success, that she needed to break free from her limiting beliefs and reinvent herself. And she wasn't alone in changing her neck. John Legend was born John Stevens. Joaquin Phoenix was born Joaquin Bottom. I mean, <laughs> you can't blame her for that one. And Calvin Harris was born Adam Wiles. These guys and girls all recognized that they needed to create a new identity. And if you're not where you are, if you're not achieving your goals, if you feel stuck in a rut, if you struggle to stay consistent, then you need to do the same. But the good news is, unlike these guys and girls, you don't need to change your neck. You just have to start believing that you're worthy of it and acting like the person who has already achieved it. Self-belief is a superpower. People often ask me what they think my best trait is. And I always tell them the same thing, delusional self-belief. To achieve big goals like the ones I've set for myself, you have to be seen as delusional by the normal people. Self-belief takes time to cultivate, but it comes from momentum. And I often say that if you could bottle and sell momentum, you'd be a trillionaire. Because the only way for you to get it 
is to take those first few steps. The problem is, is that those first few steps are the biggest and the hardest. And what makes it worse is that most people are walking blindly. They've got no idea whether they're even going in the right direction. The reason I do these videos, the reason I have my coaching program is to give you the map. And better still, you get me by your side when you walk it. So when you come up against an obstacle and you don't know what to do, I'm there to help. That's how you build unbreakable consistency. Get the right vehicle, clean up your environment, give yourselves non-negotiables, and then figure out your driver. And if you have your vehicle and your driver, you'll be unstoppable. Remember, first link in the description to get your personalized nutrition targets, and second link to apply for my coaching program. That's just lesson one. If you want the others, Get involved. Anyway, I'll leave it there for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one, and I'll see you soon.